Welcome to this introduction to Fuser. In this video I will be covering some of the main features Fuser has to offer. On the right over here this is the Revit project that I will be working in. If I go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and the Linked File Manager, these are all the linked files that are synced in with Fuser right now. I'm going to press OK to back out of that and I am going to go to a free camera and zoom out a little bit or fly back so you can kind of see the project that I'm working in. These are all the buildings that are synced in from the various linked files. Also one thing to note, all these trees that are loaded in are actually RPC replacements. So we take your RPC trees and replace them with actual nice looking geometry. The first feature we will be looking at today is the edit selection feature. As I walk up to this planter box and select it, and go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and the edit selection button. This will actually look through your different plan views and find a plan view with this object and select the object for you. Now we can go straight into our edit type and change this material. I'm going to look for a stone material to replace this with and take this one, press OK and OK. And now all this information gets sent over into Fuser. And there you go, it updates and now we have these stone planter boxes. So just a really easy way of finding objects and editing them inside of your projects. The next thing I'll be covering are the different avatars. Right now I am the male avatar. We can actually change the clothing that we're wearing, so I'm going to use avatar customization to scroll through some of the outfits. We also have a construction worker outfit in the beginning, so if you're in the early phases of development, this might be an avatar you want to use. Go back to the suit avatar and show you a few other things. I'm going to go back to my avatar types and change to the female avatar, and we also have the child avatar. One cool thing about this, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom the camera into first person view. Now the camera will be at the eye height of the actual avatar you're navigating with. If I switch back to the male avatar, you can see the camera has moved up to be at the eye height of the male avatar. One final thing to note, if you are the male or female avatars, you can turn disability on or off. Turning it on will place your avatar in a wheelchair, and this just gives you one more way of navigating your project, giving you a different perspective. In this section, I will be showing how Fuser can assist in the editing of linked files. As you can see here, I have two floors that are kind of fighting for the same space. One is a structural file, while the other is the architectural file. I'm going to go ahead and select the carpet, which is from the structural or the architectural file, and go and do an edit selection. This will bring up this message, element is within the linked file. In order to modify this element, you need to close the current file and open the linked file. And here's the linked file. I'm going to go ahead and press continue. And this will close out the current Revit project that I was working in. And it's going to open up the linked file that was listed inside that message. And while this is happening, all of your other linked files that we originally synced in are actually going to stay inside of Fuser. So you're going to always see 100% of all your linked files uh, synced into Fuser, allowing you to see kind of what you're adjusting and making sure everything looks correct. We already have these linked files loaded in, so I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. And we're going to ignore this for now. So what Fuser is doing now is resynchronizing with Revit. And what this means is it's checking the file that it's just opened with all the information that it currently has synced in for that project and making sure they match. So once everything is complete and this reaches the 100%, everything is good, everything matches, this resynchronization with Revit will go away and you'll be able to continue editing and making all your corrections. So we've reached the 100%. It's also going to select the object we wanted. So we wanted the floor. It's already selected inside of Revit. So now I can just edit the, edit the floor. I'm going to add one inch to the height offset and go ahead and click apply. And this will adjust it inside of Revit and also send that information to Fuser. Our floor has moved up. Pressing escape will deselect the object. And now we have the floor no longer fighting for space with our structural floor. So just an easy way of finding these, these things inside of your linked files and opening the linked files and making the corrections. Now we're going to go over how Fuser handles its lighting. If I go up to the Scenes Controls tab and the Times Controls tab, you can see we have the sundial. Clicking on the blue arrow and moving it will actually change the time of day. And as the sun actually goes down and it becomes night, the lights will actually turn on inside your building. So let's go ahead and edit some of these lights so you can see how easy it is. As I come around this corner, you can see that we have these six lights over here. Probably don't need all six, so I'm going to go ahead and select one. Go to the Calic Fusion Tech tab and do Edit Selection. This will just find our lights inside of our project. I'm going to go ahead and select a row of these and delete them. Now I'm just going to grab this other row and move it over and kind of center it in this hallway just to make it look a little bit nicer. Grab it and move it over, right about there. And as you can see, when I let go of this, the lights will actually turn off for a second, and then they'll start turning back on. This is the lights just recalculating how it's supposed to light the area. So now we have our lights back on. Let's go ahead and actually change some parameters inside one of these lights so you can kind of see how, how it's done. Go to the edit type for the light. And I'm just going to go down and change the initial color to something different. 
So I'm going to open up the initial color and let's see what our options are. Let's just go with, uh, let's just do this top white one and press OK. So this should go from kind of a yellow to a white light. Press OK. And the lights are going to turn off again and recalculate how it's supposed to be lighted and make the change for the color. So white might not have been a great choice to show the difference on the lighting when we edited it. Uh, it'd be kind of hard to tell without the before and after of how much it has changed. But if I select the light and go to the color, you can see we're at 6500. And if I go over to the Revit side of it and select the light, if Revit will let me select a light, it's not the light. Let's go ahead and select a different one and do edit type. You can see that we are at 6500 as well on the initial color. So let's go ahead and change something else so it's a little bit more obvious. I'm going to change our color to something a little bit different like red. So this will be pretty obvious to see the difference between the white and red. Go ahead and press OK to get out of that. And when the lights will come back on, you will be able to see how this lighting will affect the environment around it. So now we have red on our carpets and on our walls. So whatever you set inside your Revit project is what we use to light your scene. It will actually change for all the instances of this light, so as we look around we find these other ones around the project that we actually changed to red as well. The next feature that I'll be showing is the camera snapshot feature. I'm going to use the 2D nav map to get my avatar to where I want to be, so right click the 2D nav map, and my avatar will teleport to the point that I clicked. Now let's go ahead and line up my snapshot. I'm going to go ahead and get these menus out of the way really quick. Now I'm going to try to get as much of this building in the view or in this shot as possible. So I'm going to back up as far as I can go to about there. And I'm going to go ahead and try to line this up right there. And now go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and go over to the Camera Snapshot button and click on it. And what this is doing is sending all of the camera information from Fuser into Revit. And Revit's created this new scene for us, so our Fuser Snapshot 2. So really we've just created a camera inside of Revit using the camera information from Fuser. As you can see, our scenes kind of line up. Now you can go ahead and do your render inside of Revit. I'm going to use some movie magic here. And uh, here is our Revit scene that we have rendered out. So just a real easy way of finding snapshot locations while using Fuser and then using Revit's Ray Trace Renderer to render the snapshot. The next feature we're going to take a look at is the FBX Replace feature. I'm just going to go ahead and select this parking line and do an edit selection. This is just to help me find where I'm working at inside my project. Now let's go ahead and place a couple RPCs here. So we have our RPC beetle. I'm going to go ahead and place one here and place one over here as well. Now we can just hit escape to finish that and hop on over into Fuser and you can see that our RPC cars will be popping in here shortly. There they are. So I mean they look kind of like cars but not very good looking cars. So let's go ahead and replace them with a better one. So select the RPC and go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and the FBX Replace button. Now in this menu, click the FBX button, and let's go ahead and navigate to our FBX file. And we have our car, so let's select that FBX file and click Open, and Save. And this will save that FBX over this RPC, so every time this RPC is rendered for this project, it's actually going to render this uh, FBX car instead. So here is our car. It looks a lot better than what we had before. So this is just a really easy way of taking these low-poly RPCs and replacing them with nice-looking uh, FBX files. The next feature we're going to be covering is our annotations feature. As you can see, we have this planter box that's the wrong material, and we have this arrow that's kind of floating above the ground. So let's go ahead and create some annotations for these objects. I can select the arrow and go to the annotation button. Now I can give this annotation a title. So let's do like floating arrow. Let's give this annotation some content. So lower this arrow to the ground. And now let's save it and go over to our planter box and do the same. So select the planter box and do annotation. Let's go ahead and give it a title, so change material. And the contents, let's say, change this material to match the other planters. And let's go ahead and fix planters real quick. There we go, and click save. Now we have our two annotated objects showing up red. Let me move forward a little bit so you can see how this works go to my settings tab and in the annotation manager you can click on either of your annotations so let's go ahead and click on the floating arrow and the camera's going to move to the camera's position when the annotation was created so you see exactly what was seen by the person creating the annotation now we have both of our annotations let's go ahead and cancel out of this and show you a couple other features for this we have our annotations that show up red but you can turn them off if you don't want them showing up also you can save them out 
Clicking on the Save button will allow you to save it to your hard drive. Go ahead and just name this My Anos. Click Save. And let's go ahead and delete these annotations, and I can load them back in. So now we can go to the Load button, and let's navigate to our annotation file. Here it is. And there we have our annotations back. So we can click on them. It goes back to the camera position from when they were created. So you can see everything. Also, one step further than this, we actually allow you to load your annotations into your Revit project as well. So we can do our load annotations. Let's go ahead and navigate to our annotations and open them up. And so here they are. You can double click on one of these and it'll actually take you to the object that the annotation was on. So here is our parking arrow. And we can also double click on the other one. And there is our planter box. One other feature about this, let me go ahead and deselect this planter box. We can highlight our annotations. So everything with an annotation on it will actually show up with the red outlines. The next thing I'll be covering is the sun study. If you go to the scenes control tab, in the times control tab we have our sundial. You can actually click on the arrow and drag it like I showed before. Or you can actually click a point on the sundial and the arrow will animate to that point. Let's go ahead and change this to the daytime. And to go over the sun study side of it, we have a default city of San Diego and the date of January 18th, 2014. But to set it up for your own study, sun study, you do that inside of Revit. So let's go to our sun settings and do a single day, sunrise to sunset, and 15 minute interval. Let's go ahead and pick a new location. I'm going to go to the default city list. And I am going to choose uh, New York. So we type in New York and select it and press OK. And let's go ahead and press OK. Now that we have our sun study set up inside of Revit, let's send this information over into Fuser. To do that, we turn our sun path on. Once the sun path gets turned on, Revit will send all of its sun study information into Fuser. And Fuser will recalculate its sun positioning information. As you can see, the time of day inside of Fuser has just changed. That's because the sun is at early morning inside of Revit 445. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's adjust the time of day to, say, 10 a.m. And as you can see, inside of Fuser, it's updated to 10 a.m. Also, if we adjust it one more time, and let me actually grab the sun this time, and to 2 p.m., it's actually changed inside of Fuser to 2 p.m. Now, if you don't want to go through the hassle of doing that inside of Revit, you can just use the sun dial inside of Fuser to adjust the time, and the sun will move along the same curve. Also, you can use the 1 times, 2 times, and 4 times, and this will just do a time lapse of the 24-hour sun study for that given day. The next feature I'll be showing is the Assign Video feature. I'm going to go ahead and select this TV screen and do an edit selection. With the screen selected, I can go to the Calic Fuser Tech tab and down to the Assign Video button. Once this menu opens, click the Video button to navigate to your video saved location. I'm just going to use the Windows default video for now. I'm going to select it and click Open, and now click Save. Now the video will start playing on my TV screen. This feature is just a nice way to add an extra little something to your presentations. Uh, the assigned video supports MP4s, AVIs, and WMVs. For the final thing I will be showing is the Cinematic Editor in the Screenshots Controls tab. I'm going to go down to the Take Cinematic button. This will open up our Cinematic Editor. I'm going to full screen this because we won't be using Revit anymore. And now I'm just going to fly back and start off where I want my cinematic to begin. And uh, so right about here, and then go down to the timeline and add that node. So really what we're going to be doing is adding camera nodes along uh, a path that we want the camera to fly for our cinematic. And just adding these points to the timeline. So I'm going to fly over here and turn the camera a little bit and place it here. So every node is taking the camera's position and orientation and it's saving that. So when it goes to record it, it will actually just follow this path that you've created and uh, that's what you're going to be seeing. So we place our final node and you can go ahead and click the play button to preview everything. And this is what we're going to be rendering out as our video. So you can just fly around your entire project and film what you'd like to film. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag this back a little bit to make it a little bit faster. If you want to change the time between nodes, just go ahead and drag them on the timeline to change their timing. Now, that looks pretty good, so we're going to stop it right there. You can scrub through your timeline if you want to see anything. Now I'm just going to go over and render this out. So render cinematic. And we have our different qualities, so draft, medium, high, and resolutions 480, 720, and 1080p. Go ahead and click save, and this will give me an option to save my file. So I'm going to do example video and click save, and this will start the rendering process. Uh, I'll be back with the finished video. And here is our rendered clip, and that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was informative, and I hope you enjoy Fuser.